And joining us now from Lancaster, England, is Richard Johnson. He's a lecturer in U.S. politics at Queen Mary University of London. Uh, thanks so much for being here with us. So we just heard some measured views there, but it's impossible to ignore the growing sense of panic among Democrats. Uh, strategists are, are racing around conducting new polls. The president's meeting with his family this weekend. Do, we, uh, do, do you expect him to make any big announcement that perhaps he will step aside? I mean, the timetable I've been hearing is he's got a week to uh, to prove himself. And I mean, the, the, the important date to keep in mind is the convention beginning on the 19th of August. And you know, at the moment, Joe Biden is not the Democratic nominee. That will be a choice made by the convention. The convention consists of about 4,000 delegates. Now, Joe Biden has 99% of those delegates are pledged to Joe Biden. The rules of the Democratic Party say that those delegates should vote in good conscience for the candidate that they are pledged to vote for. Uh, but they don't actually have to vote for Biden. That was a rule that was changed in the 1980s after Ted Kennedy's challenge of Jimmy Carter. It's called the robot rule by critics who said you just have to robotically vote for who you were pledged to vote for. So there is some room for Biden's own delegates to vote against him. But I think it's unlikely that they would vote against him. Um, and so the question really then is a much more uh, closer question, a much more proximate question, which is, would Joe Biden himself pull back um, mm -hmm. and in effect um, open up the process for a, uh, a replacement? Exactly right. And, and if he were to, I mean, w you know, looking at, uh, at some of the editorials that were in, one of, the, one of the many blows was that New York Times editorial. And in it, they wrote, there are Democratic leaders better equipped to present clear, compelling and energetic alternatives to a second Trump presidency. But is that true? I mean, one of the problems is the lack of a clear successor. Normally, it would be the vice president. But as has been pointed out many times, her numbers are, are actually worse than the president's. That, I think, is exactly the problem, and that has been the problem all along. You know, I think Joe Biden, there was a chance that Joe Biden might have been voluntarily a one-term president. He ran for president in 2020, saying that he'd be a bridge to the future. When he selected Kamala Harris uh, it, four years ago as his vice presidential nominee, many people thought that, in, in effect, he was going to prepare her to be his successor. But from the start of his presidency, doubts emerged about her uh, ability to connect with the electorate, uh, perceptions of her uh, competence and so on, uh, some fair, some not so fair. And I, th I think Joe Biden, in effect, decided at some point during his presidency that Kamala Harris would not be a strong candidate against Donald Trump. And this, that, in that d determination really, I think, meant that he had to run for re-election because Biden couldn't say I'm not going to run for re-election, but I also don't have confidence in my vice president to succeed me uh, as, as the nominee. Um, and that is, I think, still the, his problem right now, mm. is I think that probably the biggest barrier to him pulling back is his lack of confidence in Kamala Harris. But then if, you know, there's a groundswell for somebody else, let's say if they were to, you know, I guess leapfrog her metaphorically there, uh, would there be a danger of, of alienating certain groups of voters and, and the party essentially tearing itself apart? Exactly. So then so then the problem becomes, OK, well, in theory, Biden could say, um, actually, I, I want us to have a, a fully open convention. I release my delegates. I want them to listen to the speeches. Perhaps we'll have some CNN debates uh, in the next few weeks between uh, potential candidates. And my delegates can listen to those debates. Um, the problem with that is that Kamala Harris will have a strong following within the party, maybe not enough to win the nomination, and her supporters uh, will feel, will feel uh, to a certain extent, rightly aggrieved uh, that the person who selected her to be the next in line for the presidency right now uh, doesn't feel comfortable saying that I think she should be the next president uh, in January uh, of next year. And then the risk for the Democrats becomes depressed turnout in November. And this is an all hands on deck election. The Democrats need everyone, uh, all of their supporters to turn out. They don't have the luxury of key constituencies uh, staying home or having uh, lethargic turnout uh, in, in, in November. And that I think is the risk of a messy nomination contest.
Listen, I, I, I listed all of the left-leaning media that are calling for President Biden to, to stand down after that debate, um, but we haven't seen the same mobilization by the right wing, um, you know, basically calling for Donald Trump to stand down after, after he was convicted. I mean, the, the, the double standard seems uh, particularly acute here. There certainly is a double standard, and you can look at, we can maybe go back to, say, 2016, actually, when the Access Hollywood uh, tape came out and uh, Trump uh, spoke in um, appalling ways about uh, uh, treating women. Uh, there were calls at that time uh, for Trump to stand down. I think if you look back at the media commentary around that time, people effectively thought Trump would be, would be toast in the election. Trump's inner circle told him to just to plow on, to ignore it. Uh, the fundamentals of the election were what mattered more. Uh, and in, in that sense, they were vindicated. I think the Republicans took a certain lesson from that. And I wonder if the Biden inner circle will take a similar lesson. Obviously, it's a very different set of circumstances. But the Biden campaign might, might basically say, look, what really matters is the fundamentals of the election, um, the, the economy, uh, the fact that you have been the president, people know you can be president because you are the president at the moment. Um, and, and, and I think there is a chance that, that Biden does pull through. I'm not saying it's the right decision for, for November, but I think that uh, there will be strong voices who might even look at the Trump example and say, you can weather this storm and still win. It'll be a fascinating uh, a window of decision, uh, as you uh, spoke of there, as we see what happens. Uh, Richard Johnson, thank you so much for uh, your analysis. Really appreciate it. Thank you.